We're going to have Dr. Bob Malamy tell you a theory about the mother's milk. It's actually not a theory, it's proven scientific fact, okay? Endocannabinoids, cement, the marijuana that we make. That's what endocannabinoids mean. Endo from within, cannabinoids, cannabis, all right? We all make marijuana-like compounds. If you don't have enough, you're depressed. If you don't have enough, you suffer pain. You know, if you don't have enough, maybe you, that's why we get some cancers. It works and does everything in our body all the time, from the time we're conceived until the time we die. But guess what? It's in mother's milk. When a mother breastfeeds her baby, and I don't care whether you're talking about a mother cow or a mother human being, in that milk are endocannabinoids that are psychoactive, and when that baby comes out after having gone through that trauma of childbirth, those hours of contraction, etc., it needs to be relaxed, it needs to be protected because now it's on the outside breathing oxygen and your endocannabinoids protect your nerve cells from dying from too much oxygen and also that baby's got to start eating. Well, guess what? As soon as they get that mother's milk, they bond with the mother because they now get their appetite stimulated, they are calm, they are relaxed, and it's all because we got cannabis in mother's milk. Just imagine how insane it is. Our government has outlawed activities that are in mother's milk that also happen to kill cancer, at least in experimental studies, and there are people... What's happened now is medicine has returned to the people. Because of the dispensaries and because people are using cannabis, they are exploring what it can do for them. Unlike the pharmaceuticals with you know, a myriad of side effects, often toxic, often killing you, cannabis is good for you. It's an essential nutrient. We need more of it because of how man has changed our environment. In the past, we had our cannabinoid activity set relatively low because we were dying young and we lived in squalor. But over the past hundred years, we've changed our environment. We now have public health, we have antibiotics, we have good nutrition. We are dying when we live longer and we die from the biological friction that's really synonymous in many ways with inflammation. And the way we counteract that now is with more cannabis. So cannabis is an essential nutrient. And if you want to live a longer and healthy life, you have to consume a certain amount of it regularly. A few years ago, the oldest woman on the planet died. She died at 125 years old. When she was 120, she lived in India in a mud hut. They did an interview with her and they got a picture of her. You go online and look for it. Look up oldest woman in the world and look up ganja. They got a picture of her smoking a big fat split. And she says that's what kept her alive for all of that time. 120 years when they did the interview, 125 when she died. So we have to change the world. You're doing it right now by being here. You do it by learning the facts behind cannabis science and what's going on with it. And by spreading that knowledge and by helping people get better psychologically, physically, so we can change our society and make a healthier society. We need more cannabis. Again, we don't want to end prohibition. We want to reverse prohibition. We want 60 years where every cop and every legislator has to test dirty with their piss. Let's see the alternative and the effects of the alternative in creating a new world. Peace and love.